Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Anabrick, the show where we talk about the week's topics in anime, manga, and video games. My name's Jason, and this week we're talking about Attack on Titan. We're talking about our second half of our winter season first impressions. We're talking about a couple um, new series that are actually getting some exposure here in the States, uh, especially one on uh, Toonami in the very near future. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, a few other bits and pieces, a couple video game trailers, also uh, a couple new figures that are coming up down the line that I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, will want to go ahead and buy. <laughs> so, but let's jump on to um, the main topic that everyone's been talking about. It's a, it's a car commercial. And why are we talking about a car commercial here on Break? Well, this is why. <laughs> yeah, so Subaru decided, you know what, we want to capitalize on the whole Attack on Titan franchise, and, you know, let's make a car commercial with this. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> now, I'll give them credit, because they actually brought in um, a special effects guru, uh, Shinji Higuchi, who actually has already been tapped to direct the upcoming live-action adaptation of Attack on Titan. Now, if you were guys were hoping that, okay, this is a glimpse of how they're going to look in the movie, you may be disappointed because they've already stated that everything they've worked on so far for the Subaru commercial uh, is just for the commercial. There's nothing here that should be um, used for the movie. That being said, I look at it as this 30 second commercial is more like a screen test for how um, they believe the Titans should look like on, in live action. So, um, they could say what they want. I can believe what I want, and we'll find out uh, when the movie comes out whether or not I was right. <laughs> so, there's actually a uh, kind of cool uh, special effects before and after, a little behind the scenes of how they filmed the Titans, how they uh, uh, handled the makeup, how they um, handled all the special effects for this. Uh, uh, this commercial. That's a, a few minutes long, so you guys can folk, uh, find that online uh, yourselves. And um, if you have um, any of your thoughts about it, let me know. And if you guys think that they should actually make a commercial with any other product, <laughs> let me know. I'm, I'll be kind of curious to see, because I can, I can easily imagine them saying, hey, look, there's already 3DS games, and now we're covering a Subaru Forester commercial. Um, next up, Pocky, I have no idea. <laughs> Who knows? All right. Well, the other uh, few bits of news that people have been talking about is, um, well, one's kind of a given, I should say, is that anybody who watched Free, the the, the swimming anime from uh, last summer, um, when the series ended, or the s season ended, I should say, it had a, a flash card of, see you next summer. And a lot of people instantly thought, okay, cool, second season. Uh, or is it a movie? Or is it an OVA? Well, it looks like there was a special event that happened on Sunday over in Japan. And they revealed that it was actually for the second season. We're getting a full second season of free. I am actually kind of looking forward to this. I was initially skeptical if I would enjoy... Um, this anime from Kyoto Animation. A lot of people, and, yeah, <laughs> I love the otaku backlash from the initial commercial that uh, came out for the first season because people, went, all the otaku basically went, wait, you're used to creating, you know, moe blobs. Why are these all guys? What the hell is going on here? And then it actually turned to be a very enjoyable series. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to the second season. We already, um, if you actually missed out on the first episode, or the first uh, series, I should say. Go check it out. I believe it's still streaming on Crunchyroll. So you have uh, still have a chance to go and catch up for it. Then again, we still have uh, a few more months before the summer shows up. So I'm guessing the, the summer season of anime will have the second season of free. Uh, a couple other news real quick. I also know that there was a little tweet that, came, that went out. Um... <laughs> There was a, there's a, a Twitter account, uh, IEEE 802111, um, decided to post a picture of a magazine cover, and um, <laughs> this thing was so popular that in a span of, like, I forget how long, just a very short amount of time, 
It was retweeted over 11,000 times, and this is the picture. This is actually showcasing that Black Butler is returning for a new anime series. Um, looks like, i take it back, in the first two hours it was retweeted over 8,500 times it's already over 11,000 retweets at this point no idea what to expect from this second season um whether it's a continuation whether it's a re uh, a remake not quite sure but honestly the the fanboys and the fangirls out there are going absolutely crazy for this and I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll, I'll watch uh, a few episodes like I always do with every other series to see uh, how it turns out. I've been pleasantly surprised before, so uh, why not give this one uh, the benefit of the doubt as well? So stay tuned for more information about that. Um, I'm sure a lot of the fans out there have already tried to find some way to get to Japan or find a copy of the live-action movie adaptation that just released uh, about a week and a half ago over in Japan. So, no word yet if anybody's going to bring that over stateside, but given the popularity here in the States, I'm quite positive it'll make its way, at least to DVD and Blu-ray, uh, sometime this year. Well, hopefully. <sighs> Time for some sad news, though, because... I am a huge fan of noir. I have loved this uh, this series ever since it first came out. And a few months ago, I talked about on this show that um, the uh, cable uh, uh, cable company Stars was actually planning to create a live action drama adaptation of noir. And I went, really? That would be amazing. I I, I would. I was a little skeptical because I wonder how stars will be able to, tr you know, transfer it over. But then again, they did a pretty damn good job when they teamed up with BBC to um, uh, work on Torchwood Miracle Day. So looks like it would be fantastic. They brought Sam Raimi in to produce it, who worked on, you know, Xena, Legend of the Seekers, Spider-Man, Evil Dead. Uh, had a couple other people working on the scripts. So I was thinking, okay, we're getting close to casting calls and we'll get some uh, first glimpses of the production. Ah, <sighs> no. So, in an interview published last Thursday, um, the managing director for Stars confirmed that the noir adaptation, quote-unquote, is not moving forward. Um, they just can't get noir creatively to a place where everyone feels good about it. I would s never say that there's no chance, but it's a little more frust uh, frustrating as time goes on. So that basically tells me that they couldn't strike a balance between the uh, the anime storyline and a modernized American storyline that they would probably want to uh, put in there for general audiences. And to be honest, trying to adapt a uh, an anime or a manga series for Western audiences that are not anime fans is a hard thing to do. <laughs> I mean, I, I love to go back to the... Um, the original uh, uh, screenplay for a live-action Cowboy Bebop movie. Um, the scriptwriter actually stated he was a huge fan and he made this as accurate as possible. But <laughs> the uh, he was, it was he was so close to the the accuracy of the series that to duplicate what he did on pa on paper would have cost about half a billion dollars. So. Don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, same thing when you had the, you know, the live action Ava movie. And of course at that point now we have Pacific Rim. Which was freaking amazing. So now at least for the Mecha uh, fans out there. You know that it could be done and done well. So where's my Ava movie? <laughs> oh well. But it is sad that Noir is not going to be on stars. But maybe in the future. Who knows? In the meantime, I'll go ahead and watch the anime again. Um, or, you know what? I should just watch Toonami. Because Toonami has been kicking ass over the past few months. I have absolutely been loving Space Dandy. I'll give my uh, first impressions of that in a moment. Um, I'm loving the new lineup. I'm loving the, the expanded uh, time frame. Well, an extra half hour for uh, Space Dandy. But still, it's fantastic. So, what else is going to join the lineup? Um, recently, they announced they're bringing back Samurai Jack, which was a, f a fan favorite. And they're going to add another anime series to the lineup, courtesy of Funimation. And that one 
is going to be Black Lagoon. If you have never seen this, um, where the hell have you been? <laughs> Basically, uh, you could almost basically t look at this as like a modern take on, well, a modern f uh, fantastical take on piracy. <laughs> so, you, uh, ragtag group, uh, smuggling drugs, guns, stolen goods, it's a typical day of work. And with the, they decided to drag uh, um, this small businessman in who was uh, essentially kind of given up by his management. Um, at the end of the first episode, you know, he decides to... Uh, Joined the team, and he, they had given the nickname Rock. So, <laughs> I my, my I'm, the reason I'm laughing about this is because not because I'm, you know, confused why they're going to bring this onto the uh, the series, but is anybody who's actually ever watched this in either English or Japanese, there is a crap ton of swearing in this. So, how are they going to go about handling that in the? Uh, the broadcast version. I'm really hoping that they try to find a way to, uh, if they have to mute it, if they have to, you know, bleep it, sure, whatever. I'm just hoping they don't try to edit it out. Doing so would actually, for one, make every episode less than five minutes long, and two, just, um, it would not give the fans justice to actually check out this series. At that point, I would just say, go ahead. Uh, buy the Blu-rays, buy the, the the DVDs. Um, but in any case, at least give one episode a shot. It should be launching March 22nd. Uh, it's going to replace Soul Eater on the Toonami schedule. So, epic news there. All right. Let's see what we got here. I know, um, last episode I started talking about, uh, about nine or ten different series that just started, um, for the winter anime season. M um, m actually, every single one I talked about last time were all on Crunchyroll. Decided to expand a little bit. There's still a couple uh, titles I have yet to watch on Crunchyroll. But I also, this time, included stuff that was streaming on Funimation's website. So I decided to give that a shot as well. And we'll just talk about a few of them real quick. Um, <laughs> this first one. Tonari no Seki-kun. This one... It's thankfully short. Each episode's only about mm, seven, eight minutes long, but it actually works for this format because the the, the long and short of this ep uh, this series, I should say, is you have <laughs> these you have um, a boy named Seki who basically is sits in the back of the class and spends the entire episode, which is just a class period, uh, setting up elaborate designs to keep himself, you know, busy, allow him to goof off. He claims he can do this without the teacher noticing, but these things get so elaborate, you're wondering how the teacher can't see these. Maybe the teacher's blind, but it, it kind of adds to the comedy. And <laughs> I just feel bad for the girl next to her, who all she does is just sit there and look at this, at, at Seki and all the little... um tricks that he does to try to keep himself busy, keep himself entertained. Um, <laughs> all it is is basically a boy killing time. Um, it's good for a quick laugh. Thankfully, these are nowhere near um, regular episode length. If they even tried it at you know the, the usual 24-minute mark, it would lose so many viewers in the first episode. This is, this is in for a quick laugh. You get in, out, and move on to your next series. So a nice little um, uh, bit to watch for your day. Uh, next up, D fragments or D frag for short. Um, what can I say about this? I, you know, I look at this series, and it looks like there always has to be. Uh, every time there's a, a an episode out there or a season out there, there's always a series like this. You have a bunch of girls go together. They're going to make their own own club. This variation is called the Game Creation Club. Um, and, of course, their club is just about to be shut down unless they can find one more member. And, of course, they find a, a, a well-meaning guy, um, uh, Kenji, I believe his name was. And he just 
doesn't really care. He just wants to hang out with his friends, but he gets dragged into this, and next thing you know, he's getting dragged into the club's hijinks. And that's about it. You try to get anything regarding, like, character development? No, you're not going to get that here. If you try to think about anything meaningful here, no, you're not going to get that here. This is almost j- as bad as, like, Tonari no Seki-kun in the sense that this might have done better if it was done as a short, as, like, you know, seven, eight-minute mark. That would actually work much better for this um, type of series because... When you try to fill it up to 24 minutes, you're going to exaggerate everything. You're trying to exaggerate the jokes. You're going to try to exaggerate the slapstick comedy. It doesn't really work. It's it's a little overwhelming at times because they keep on throwing it in your face. Ah, this is funny. This is funny, right? No. Yeah, so it's light. It's it's good for a quick laugh. I kind of wish this one went for just a... um, uh, like a, a short instead of these small one uh, instead of the full series, but um yeah we've seen this time and time again we don't need to see this anymore. <sighs> okay, how about Norin? Norin is <laughs> I, I how can I say about this? I mean some people call it like a variation of like. Silver Spoon with fan service, which I kind of guess. <laughs> so, yeah, basically you have, you know, this guy who has is so obsessed with this idol to the point where he's mailing her produce that he's growing. And okay. <laughs> Uh, apparently she unexpectedly retires from the stage and, of course, this being an anime, transfers to an exact same school as his. And because, um, for whatever reason at the beginning, he didn't really recognize her. And the whole point of this series uh, basically is how these two um, react to each other and on their adventures in high school. And, um, yeah... I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I absolutely love Silver Spoon. It was great the way it is. I don't need another series out there trying to get the same crowd, but try to add a spin to it with an idol. It doesn't need it. It, it, it's not needed. It's not wanted. Um, I'm hoping though, like there's inklings in the first episode that. There could be a relationship uh, brewing in here, and not just the will they, won't they kind of, you know, blah, blah, blah that we've always seen in, all, in a lot of these series. This one, I'm just hoping they actually move forward this time. So, I mean, that little bit alone is enough to get me to continue watching this series for at least a few more episodes. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it looks nice, it's decent quality in terms of the animation. Um,. Some of the songs are catchy, but um, <laughs> I kind of like what Dark Horse in the chat says. If you don't like Silver Spoon, we can't be friends. <laughs> so yeah, that is Norin, a- a.k.a. Silver Spoon with an idol. <laughs> Let's go a little psychedelic now, shall we? And now I don't have any good music for this scene, but we're going to talk about Hamatora. This one, whoop, that's Space Dandy. No, we want Hamatora. There you go, that's Hamatora. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one, like I said, loves to go psychedelic in all the colors. Um, the animation style, in terms of all the, the colors and whatnot, reminds me uh, a little bit of Gankutso, the, the Count of Monte Cristo from years ago, that they had um, the very cool designs of each character had like their own patterns that followed them around. It was actually really cool. This one... Almost uses the same style, um, not as uh, detailed as that one, but this one, yeah, this one I look at it and go, okay, you're going kind of trippy on the visuals, and that's fine. That's great to capture someone's, um, you know, up front. But the thing is, though, 
anything beyond the colors and the st- uh, the art style, you get to, oh, wait, all these people have superpowers. Oh, they need to go around and do stuff. Oh, they must fight criminals. Oh, why are we going through this again? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I watched the first episode. It's... You can almost you can predict what's going to happen at the end in the first five minutes of the series of the episode, um, like it starts going down the same path of say like darker than black, but then and then again darker than black went somewhere and actually got good. I don't foresee this one doing the exact same thing. So I don't know. I just look at it as you have super powered uh, people carrying out tasks. You have an art style that will kind of cause people migraines if they stare at it for too long and um yeah if it goes any farther than this i'll be very very surprised okay what about yeah let's go let's go let's go with the pilot's love song yeah that one was a uh, was interesting now if this title sounds familiar and you're thinking wait a minute wasn't there a movie that came out like this that was called the the princess and the pilot yes that came out uh i believe it was a couple years ago and they're both based on the same series of novels and they're in both in the same universe but that's about it so uh if you've never seen the movie before don't worry about it. You're not going to, you know, care. You're not going to need to watch that with it, seeing this. Um, if anybody's seen, um, oh, what was that one other series out there? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, Last Exile. That's that's the one I'm thinking of. So if you liked Last Exile in terms of the um, all the flying, the animation, the action sequences, you're going to enjoy the pilot's love song. Uh, very similar on it. A lot of forecasting that you had also in Last Exile. Although I laughed the f- laughed so many freaking times at the main character's name. <laughs> For some reason, I, 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 I kid you not, the main character's name is Kal-El. And I'm like, are you from Krypton? Are you Superman? No, 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 no. Just, <laughs> yeah. The main character is Kal-El. He is a pilot trainee. He's about to set on a journey of exploration on a floating island city. It's what you kind of expect for something like this. Hey, this is kind of looking looking and sounding more and more like Last Exile. But from what everyone was telling me who's read the novels, this should actually turn out a hell of a lot better than Last Exile. So I will take their word for it. I will give this one a few more episodes. Um... But like I said, if you like like the plain designs of you know Last Exile, if you like that style of we have to explore, but we're kind of like using new technology, we're not quite sure how everything works, you're going to want to check this one out. This one is actually uh, streaming on Crunchyroll, so you have an option to go check that there. All right. Last one for this, uh, uh, the first impressions for the winter season. You guys... I've been loving it. I know I've been loving it. And it is Space Dandy. Because he's a dandy guy in space. (laughs) Love, love, love this series. Um, When the first of the trailers came out, you know, Studio Bones was hyping the fact that you have all these people who worked on Cowboy Bebop coming together to make another series that kind of looks like it could have come from Cowboy Bebop. Unfortunately, at that point, a lot of people went, cool, it's another Cowboy Bebop. It's it's a great anime series, but it's not trying to be Cowboy Bebop, nor should it. Um, just because you have the same um, crew who worked on um, Bebop, do you want them to rehash the same thing over and over again? No, you want them to spin things or uh, spin things around, make um, get things going in a different direction, and that's exactly what you get with this. I love the comedy for for starters; they got the comedy down pat with this. Um, I know Funimation spent a crap load of money <laughs> to uh, get a simulcast for this, not only in, uh, in Japanese with English subtitles, but the English dub every single week, day and date with the uh, the Japanese release. And I gotta say, I gotta tell you, I'm watching each episode twice: once in English during the premiere on Toonami, and once the next morning uh, in Japanese. And I'm still loving it every single episode. The <laughs> 
Character designs, like I said, are very Bebop-esque. Um, the alien designs are very, <laughs> very ingenious at times. Uh, I already talked about the comedy. The uh, music is fan-freaking-tastic. I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to buy the soundtrack for this. Um, and, I mean, <laughs> the, the fan service. I have to mention the fan service. That You, you know me. I enjoy fan service to a point, and it doesn't need to be excessive. For some reason, the fan service in this series, in Space Dandy, is kind of excessive, but I don't care because it's so funny. Um, I mean, it's obviously a blatant ripoff of Hooters because they call these giant um, floating restaurants boobies. <laughs> and, of course, everything inside is what you expect to find in a space-themed version of Hooters. So... <laughs> But um, the main character's personality is fantastic. The last days ago, I know everything. Uh, I'm the I'm the really cool person. Oh wait, hey, there's a beautiful woman. I should go um, flirt with them, and then mess up horribly, and then of course blame it on their his uh, uh, cohorts. <laughs> um, the latest episode, episode four, was a zombie episode, and I was thinking, okay, you're gonna do a zombie episode. It's kind of been done over and over. It's been done to death. Let's be honest here. But they did it in such a way that I was laughing my ass off the entire time. I wasn't bored with it. They took it in a couple different directions that I wasn't expecting. And just props to them. Massive props to them. I cannot wait for next episode. I haven't felt this sense of anticipation for a new episode in quite a long time. So... (laughs) But, uh... Yeah, Dark Horse. Yeah, it was like uh, almost like Johnny Bravo-ish in terms of... um, Dandy's personality. In fact, that's a very good analogy. I like that one. I'm going to use that now. Yeah. Space Dandy is uh, Space Johnny Bravo. <laughs> yeah, Sega fan, the yogurt bit was like, okay, that kind of makes sense for that episode. I know I'm playing some little inside baseball for those of you who have not seen episode four yet, but honestly, go watch this. It, go watch this series. It's a visual tour de force. The comedy is awesome. It is... Oh, what was the phrase that um, Carl over at Annan stated? I saw him, him tweet something. Um, ah, yes, it was like a space opera if it was imagined by Tex Avery. So you guys need to check this one out. Um, by far, it is my uh, favorite ep- uh, series of this season. It is Space Dandy. All right, well, that pretty much covers most of all the uh, the new series that started um, for this season. Now, granted, there's uh, several series that continue on from last season. There's um, second, uh, second, third seasons from a couple other series. But if you are fans of those, you're going to enjoy them anyway, so you might as well continue watching them. I didn't feel like it was necessary for me to continue on uh, reviewing those at this time. But let's jump into some video game news, shall we? Because we have a couple new trailers. Um... First up, Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII. I remember when it was first announced, we talked about it at length through a a few different episodes, not only on Anna Break, but also on From My Mother's Basement with Michael. So with this one, um, this time around, because it's coming out um, fairly soon, I mean, we're talking February 11th it's going to come out here in the States, there's um, a whole slew of new trailers coming out for this. And this one actually captures what I'm looking forward to the most about the third part of this uh, uh, 13 series in the sense that the battles are more action-packed. It's no longer just um, like a, um, a really unbalanced combination of time-based attacks and real-time moving. This one, I think, sh- should get it right. Let's find out. So, I've played the demo. I'm really looking forward to what Lightning Returns has in store, because I was a fan of the first two. There's just one thing that I'm hoping and I'm praying that this thing is going to change. Square Enix, or Square Enix if you want to give him the full name. Please, 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 please do not make me grind for days on end just to beat the final boss. That pissed me off to no avail. You were lucky that I actually played the second game. (sighs) That being said, am I going to pick this up when it first comes out? Mm, I may wait a month or two. uh, Unless I can find a a limited edition, um, limited collection edition 
still for sale because there's a lot of cool features that I actually want to pick up, including the soundtrack. The soundtrack, if it's like the first two games, is going to be fantastic. I need to buy it. Um, but yeah, I'll just wait a little bit for it. Maybe I'll throw it up on eBay or something like that. All right. Here's another game that kind of <laughs> kind of goes in a completely different direction. We all know that the Ninja Gaiden series or Gaiden series is at times one of the hardest games to beat from back in the NES days to um, current gen. Or I should say the last one was on the Xbox 360 and the PS3. So it looks like um, Tecmo wants to uh, go in a different direction uh, for this uh, next game. This one's called Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. And this one um, focuses on uh, Yaiba, who the main uh, character from the Ninja Gaiden series, um, Hayabusa, actually killed uh, a while back. But then, of course, it, like it is in video games, Yaiba was brought back to life with cyber technology, and now he's a cyborg ninja. You kind of get an idea of where this is going. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I can even explain it better than that, then enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, so you look at this and I'm thinking, okay, Cyborg Ninja who uses both his sword and mecha weapons that are built inside his cyborg arm to fight enemies. I mean, in this version we have random zombies and whatnot, but yeah, this sounds so familiar. I feel like I've... um. I don't know. I look at this, I'm thinking, I've seen this before. Um, where did I... I, I yeah, I, I don't know where I've seen it before. I can't think of that. So, I'm, it must be a new idea. I haven't thought about it. Oh, well. So, this one um, will actually be launching in, um, in North America on March 18th. And if you actually purchase this, you will also receive a, a bunch of extra outfits for a couple characters in um, Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate. So, you guys want to check this one out? If you're if you're more a fan of the Deadpool game than you are Ninja Gaiden, you'll probably enjoy Yaiba. So, you guys want to check this one out in March. Also, as a quick announcement, I know I mentioned it on Sunday's episode of From Mother's Basement, but for those of you who missed out on that, if you have an iOS device, where it's an iPad, iPhone, iPod, you have a game you need to download, and that is Tales of Fantasia. It is hitting the iOS App Store right now. It's available for free. Now, granted, they do throw in optional in-app purchases for those microtransactions we always hate. So, um, you can technically play the entire game for free. Now, granted, they're going to make things so it's you know, a little harder unless you pay like a dollar or two dollars to beat a certain part. So, you have... You know those there, but you technically you can play the entire game um, for free. The game features full voiceovers and animation um, for the battles and interstitial events, um, which kind of explains why this kind of takes up a good deal of space. We're talking about about 430 to 450 megabytes, so um, it's still worth it. I, you guys, you should check it out in the App Store. It is Tales of Fantasia couple final things before we wrap things up. A couple different uh, figures. Uh, Kotobukiya has been churning out some incredible figures for Sword Art Online late as of late. Um, they do love to tease us. They'll showcase the unfinished prototype version like six months out. And then a few months later, oh, here's the painted version. And now pre-order start now. Go. <laughs> and it uh, looks like this time around they're going to be doing the exact same thing. Their next figure from uh, Sword Art Online is actually Fairy Dance Asuna. And this one looks incredible. I'm enjoying, you know, not only the quality of the figure, but also of the base as well that she's sitting on. That actually, the the whole ti uh, Titania look looks fantastic. The hair spreading out works great in typical anime style. Um, I mean, if it looks this good in the unpainted prototype form, this thing needs to <laughs> come out and one have a full painted version, which is obviously going to happen, and two needs to come out for pre-order. Oh, I don't know, yesterday. 
So um, hopefully we will get um, pictures of the painted version in the sh- in near future and we'll f- also get the uh, price and pre-order date um, fairly soon, hopefully in the next uh, uh, next month or so. Next up is actually going to be a Miku figure that I've um, been looking at for a while. And it's actually the um, Senbon Zakuro version. And this one, actually, I remember this thing first came out um, sometime early last year. Freen was teasing it for a bit. And then we haven't heard anything for like six months. And now she's finally re- returned again, remerged as a new preview. And this one is actually for available now. And I got to say, if you were a fan... Uh, of Miku, I think this is actually a nice little take on on her. I mean, the the outfit's great, the, the the pose is awesome. I'm loving how she has the looking behind her back. That actually works really well. And this one, uh, uh, the color design actually works well. Not only with the like the the maroon purplish style of the uh, the outfit, but also goes well well with like the dark green of her hair this time around. Not her usual color, but you know what? It actually works very well in this situation. You can pre-order her. Now, at all your favorite locations, like Amiyami, Hobby Link Japan, etc., etc. She is scheduled to be released late July of this year, and she's uh, just shy of 8,000 yen, so about 80 to $85 US. So, if you are a fan of Miku, I think you'll probably want to pick up this figure, and you have some time to save up. So, yeah, I'm always sending you things and showcasing things that are going to make you spend all your money. <laughs> And I spend all my money, too, because I get things like, oh, hey, look, I totally forgot I bought, like, the four-volume set of Oriimo during um, Right Stuff's uh, holiday sale. But it was back-ordered. And I come home today and I'm like, I have a package. Oh, I forgot I bought this. <laughs> uh, oh, well, between that and I finally got the notice from AmiAmi that Dizzy is now available. Um, and now I owe for, for Dizzy. I'm like, okay, then. I got to. I'm kind of glad I got a bonus at work so I can take care of that. So, all right, everybody. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out as always. Um, Thank you for jumping in uh, one day earlier than normal. We will be back next week at our normal time um, for... Uh, which is Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific. Also, you guys want to stay tuned and watch or keep an eye on both uh, my Facebook and uh, Twitter pages of Talk Through Life Jason because I will be making an announcement later on this week regarding what we are going to do for our Sunday episode because that's apparently the bull of the supers. I'm expecting super-powered explosions everywhere and base explosions as well if I can find it. Um... But that goes right in the same time frame as we usually do our show at 5 o'clock. So we may wait until this game is over or we may just um, uh, wait another week and call it a bye. So we'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know on Facebook and Twitter later on this week. All right, everybody. It was an absolute blast. Stay tuned for Post Show and for Anna I'm Jason. Thank you so much for hanging out. See you next week. It's